configure dot these are the map our utilities very commonly used one the first one being configure dot sh so this will actually help you to set up a cluster node so if you change any services like zookeeper cldb you pretty much run the configure.sh script to reconfigure and set up the cluster node. And the other common used one is the disk setup because it formats the disks for MapR storage. And FSCK will find and fix the inconsistency in the file system. So if you have any corruption in your metadata in the storage pool, so run FSCK to fix the inconsistencies of the storage pool. Remember, there are so many options in FSCK. If there is a, for example, if, if there is a data corruption in your disk, and then you can actually fix up the, all the CRC error with FSCK. And, and MAPR is very intelligent enough to actually detect all those uh, data inconsistencies if there is any problem with the data in your disk itself. So run FSCK. GFSCK will perform a global operation on your cluster and volume. Remember, you will be using FSCK as a part of GFSCK. I think I've covered MR config in my earlier tutorials. The other main important thing is, is the mapr hyphen support but collect and hyphen dump scripts so they are actually used to collect diagnostic information and then send them to mapr support remember they will create a dot tar file which will be emailed to mapr to actually diagnose your information there is main there are fundamental difference between mapr hyphen support hyphen collect and mapr hyphen support hyphen dump hyphen collect one collects the diagnostic information from all nodes in the cluster however hyphen dump will collect only the information about the node where the script is invoked just remember that and cldb cuts it's obviously used to monitor the cldb um, or else you can actually go to this port and then you can actually find the CLDB operations as well. But having said that CLDB also guts will also give you some information. And the other main important thing is being the NTP server. All the nodes should synchronize to one internal NTP server. This is to make sure that the, all the time is synchronized and you can actually find whether the NTP queue server is being synchronized using the commands like NTP queue or systemctl command. These are the two things that's not covered in the MAPR training, but I think it's you should know all these things. The other main important thing is logs. As you know, MAPR supports three types of logging, local logging, centralized logging, and YAM logging. Uh, logging. I'm just going to give you the over very important key concepts in, and few numbers in logging. The first one being centralized logging, where if you enable that one, then you, the logs are kept for 30 days by default. Only symbolic links are, are, are created to the logs. With the local logging, logs are kept for three hours by default. Remember, the time starts when the job begins. In local logging, the yarn logging jobs expire after three hours as well. So the logs are actually stored in slash op slash map r slash logs and they are deleted after 10 days by default. You can change the setting in yarn hyphen site.xml file and just remember all the retention times are given in seconds. And the main other thing when you're doing the installation is that you, MAPR has some space requirements. For example, slash op directory has to have 128 gigabytes and slash temp should have 10, gigos, 10 gigabytes of space. And 
slash shop slash my car slash little deep data should have 500 megabytes of data space and the swap space has to be 110% of physical memory or a minimum of 25 gigabytes up to 128 gigabytes and Mapar actually recommends logical volume manager for boot rights. So just remember with the volume the, the code the coders for the volume once the advisory coda is reached an alarm is raised and the data will be continued to be written and alert is raised I'm sorry once a hard code is reached no further data can be written and any job that tries to write data to a volume where the hard code is limit will fail and just remember only compressed data is accounted against the volume coda and I will cover about the post installation check and other stuff in my next video.